Oh my gosh, that music. <laughs> okay, all right, that's getting heavy now. So this week we're wishing Cynthia well. She's retiring from broadcast news. Much of her career spent right here at Channel 13. I've had the pleasure of sitting next to you for the past I seven know, years. Seven years, and um, lucky me to have been here for 25 years, and for all of you to be our loyal viewers, because we always say we have the best viewers. We that's absolutely sure. do. Yeah. And this week we're going to look back at some of your favorite stories, starting with the one where you received an mm -hmm. Emmy for it back in 1998. And oh, man. It was really that long ago. I am happy, though, to share this story with you again because we went out to California for this one, and it's the story of Monty Roberts, who revolutionized horse training with nonviolence. Mm. It's springtime in the heart of the Santa Ynez Valley, and the farm called Flag is Up is teeming with new life. Here, some of the finest and fastest horses in the world are bred and schooled for racing. Are you ready to go to work, kid? Huh? But these days, horse trainer Monty Roberts is running a different kind of race. Okay. All right. Hi there. A race to make the most of his growing celebrity, to get his message out. You're one of her idols. I'm an idol? Why did I do, what did I do to earn that? I am a man with a mission. Monty Roberts has been called a real-life horse whisperer. His resume is his life, and it's always been about horses. Monty was riding at age two, winning shows by the time he was four. He was a stunt rider in Hollywood films and a champion rodeo rider for years. Is this the little girl here? But he's famous today for something else, his unique ability to communicate with horses. What? Are you frightened? Hmm? To train them without inflicting pain or breaking their spirit. Violence is never the answer. I don't wait for them to do something wrong and punish them for, the, for it. I wait for them to do something right and congratulate them for it, reward them for it. It's a far cry from the more traditional method, where the horse is often dominated, tied up, and traumatized, where the trainer breaks the horse's spirit, and sometimes a few bones. It still goes on today. No one of us was ever born with the right to say you must or I'll hurt you to any other creature, be it human or animal. Monty's unique understanding of horses doesn't just come from living with them or working with them. But really, the roots of his philosophy were formed in a very difficult childhood. Monty found his father's methods of breaking a horse to be brutal and violent. And he says Marvin Roberts was also violent with him, at times beating Monty with chains and leaving wounds that put him in the hospital. Monty knew there was a better way, and as a young teenager, he set out to find it. He began studying wild mustangs in the open spaces of Nevada. And that those Mustangs were quick to tell me there was a better way. And that their very language came through so clearly to me that God or Mother Nature or whatever gave me the powers of observation to, to see that. Oh, well, girl. On this day, we're invited to watch Monty work with a two-year-old thoroughbred. She's frightened, not sure what to expect. It's her right to be skeptical. It's her right to be frightened. She's a flight animal. Monty will first lock his eyes on the filly and encourage her to do what comes naturally, to flee. All motion square. But moments later, as Monty calms his body language, the horse will do the same. She locks her ear on Monty and soon begins licking and chewing. And finally, she lowers her head. Those four signals are a conversation to me. I'd rather be your friend than to continue to run away from you. Monty takes a more passive stance. He lowers his eyes and turns away. He's actually inviting her to join up with him. She accepts that invitation. Give her a rub to reward. Look for the things that she does positive and reward her for that. Next, the saddle. Again, she runs away, but Monty believes she'll ask to come back. And I'll be here for her just like your you're there for a child who's having difficulty dealing with the world out there. And she's dealing with the world right now. She does come back, 
and moments later, she's accepting a rider. The iron Monty Roberts plunge. just did in 30 minutes what many trainers take weeks to accomplish. Roberts trains all his horses this way, always has. But few took his work seriously until Monty got the invitation of a lifetime. Queen Elizabeth invited him to work with her horses. When Her Majesty endorsed my work, all things changed. And when Her Majesty said there has to be a book on this, I thought it was crazy. Or maybe not so crazy as it turns out. Monty's book, The Man Who Listens to Horses, has sold more than two million copies around the world. The Man Who Listens to Horses, my father, Monty Roberts. <laughs> Thank you. Now Monty's Thank touring the much. world, signing books and sharing his philosophy, not only in terms of how it can help horses, but people, too. How could you not want to share that? Pat Roberts understands her husband's vision, but that leaves precious little time at home, where Pat takes joy in sculpting the horses that are so much a part of their lives. Monty tries to squeeze in a few moments with his beloved horse, Dooley. While life is hectic, he has his hands securely on the reins. After all, the man on the horse is a man on a mission. To come back to the simple terms of what is right and what is wrong, um, that's, that's been the story of my life. I don't see myself slowing down. Monty Roberts is 87 years old, and he has not slowed down. Mm. His mission has taken him around the world, sharing his language of equus and his nonviolent methods of training horses. He teaches courses in person and online, and people come from all over the world to the Monty Roberts International Learning Center. That's at his farm in Solvang, California, where we went. Monty Roberts certified instructors, they're working all over the world, from training racehorses to working at top equestrian centers. In fact, I just had the pleasure of doing a podcast with Monty a couple of weeks ago. He says it was his friendship with the late Queen Elizabeth that made all the difference. Over three decades, he visited Her Majesty, worked with her horses, and she made him an honorary member of the Royal Victorian Order. And he tells me that there was no way he probably could have gotten that done on his own without her, that she was a true horsewoman at heart, Linda, and it made all the difference. Well, he is definitely the best at what he does. Yes. And you are the best at what you do, too. <laughs> thanks, um, thanks. I think our viewers know that your heart for the animals is just so sincere, <laughs> and all the good you've done over the years has just been wonderful. Well, hopefully that, that is not going to stop. Just because mm -hmm. I'm hanging up this microphone, I'm still going to, you know, be working for the animals. So. And there we're still going to be watching. Yep. <laughs>